Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about 10 times the Pawn Stars lied to their customers. But before we go on to that, if you end up liking the video, let us know by leaving a like and subscribing. It helps us out a lot and it lets us know you want to see more content like this. So without any further ado, let's get on to the video. Number 10. Yasutsugu Samurai Sword We Samurais are pretty badass. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Alright. I'm baffled, man. I couldn't tell you what I bought. It's a samurai sword. Shut up, chum. This is a samurai sword from the 15th century. It's pretty awesome. But what does that mean to the guys at Pawn Stars? Well, it means that there's another item to screw someone out of. To be fair, the guy who brought the sword in was a lawyer who ended up with the sword as a piece of collateral, so he probably wouldn't really care as long as it made him some money. Well, the opening negotiation from the stars was a measly $800. The lawyer almost accepted right there, but he kept his cool until they settled on $1,500. It's pretty sad. It may seem like a lot, but that's actually a paltry sum, because the blade was worth at least $5,000 in the condition it was in. And if they put about $3,000 worth of restoration into it, they could sell it for up to $15,000. history. You know, people spend years and years and years looking for the holy grail of Japanese swords worth up to three or four million dollars. Number nine, melted down stolen coins for lots of cash. Hey, how can I help you? I have a coin I think you might be interested in. Okay. It's a steel penny. Are you familiar with those? Yes, I am. Whoa. This is a really interesting one. A young woman brought in a collection of pretty expensive coins into the store and parted with all of them over the course of three trips. The total amount she managed to get for the coins was a little over $12,000, which is pretty good for little coins. However, it turns out that this woman had stolen the coins from her uncle. And even worse, the Pawn Stars decided to melt them down in order to make more money than they bought them for. Even worse than that, not only was his uncle screwed out of his coins by his niece, the niece was screwed out of the money by the Pawn Stars. It turns out the collection the guys melted down was worth about $50,000, and the niece only got just over twelve. dollars Eventually, she was caught and did time for her theft. It seems like everyone here is trying to cheat. Okay. You know, I own a pawn shop and I deal in a gazillion different things, so mm -hmm. I, I can't know everything, even though my kids tell me I'm a know-it-all. <laughs> <laughs> Number 8. The Colt 45 Peacemaker Action Army. This was uh, this is 1870s, and everyone wanted them. And they also had the world's greatest advertising campaign. God made all men, and Colt made them all equal. So a guy walks into a pawn shop with a Peacemaker Colt 45 from the 1800s. It's legit, but not in mint condition. To be fair here, the guy who was looking to pawn the gun off said that he bought the damn thing for only $25, which really doesn't help when you're trying to negotiate. Either way, it didn't take the pawnbroker Rick long to come up with a price. He didn't even consult one of his skeezy experts when he dished it out. He settled the deal with the guy for only $3,000. Sounds like a pretty damn good deal considering he originally got the gun for only $25. However, when Rick decided to look up the actual price of the gun, its minimum was about $5,000. And considering the quality, if there was a little money spent on refurbishing it, the gun could go for as much as $40,000. The Colt Single Action Army really was just incredibly revolutionary. I mean, this this was the most high-tech thing. Number seven, they're so notorious they get banned from yard sales. How you doing today? Pretty good, how you doing? Got this vintage Ford Lotus. I think this one is the most hilarious story in the article. It's not about a specific moment where the Pawn Stars guys cheated anyone, but it has to do with how notorious they are around thrift communities. Apparently, Rick from the show can't go out to a yard sale without being told to F off. Everyone seems to be learning just how underhanded these guys in the show are, and they don't want them prowling around in their old wares. This is hilarious to me because yard sales are usually full of stuff going for cheap, but I guess if Rick shows interest in an item, the sellers decide to hold on to it. I imagine so they can see if they can actually make any money with it. It makes sense, and in that way, it seems like the customers are now screwing the pawn guys. But still, it just goes to show how well known the guys are for screwing customers over. Pretty good condition, but it does have some warping. You could have a nice box and not a nice toy, though. <laughs> <laughs> Your goal is for collecting to have a nice toy and a nice box. Gotcha. Number six, screwing over their manager, Wayne Jeffries. And my shoes to your rosy red cheeks today. <laughs> Was that supposed to be funny? <laughs> it's funny that you... This is something I definitely didn't know until I started researching this article. 
It turns out that the guys who run the pawn shop on Pawn Stars are so sketchy that they even screwed over their own manager. Wayne Jeffries is allegedly the man who discovered the Pawn Stars back in 2007, as well as having landed them their hit show on several networks. I have to be honest when I say that I wish he didn't discover them at all. I'm sure he feels the same way now too, especially since he has a lawsuit for them. Apparently, several network executives approached the cast about pushing Jeffries out of the picture, and, well, always focusing on where the money is, not really caring about other people and their well-being. From that perspective, it made total sense for them to give the boot to the guy who found them and gave them the career in the first place. All right, but... Let's go. Come you on. heard about the guy who lost his weapon? Get, get, you heard about no, the guy who no, left his... No, no, He's pretty good, Court. Don't encourage him, man. Yo, Travi... Number five, they cheat people by faking a lot of the show. <laughs> so what do we got? This is a letter signed by Napoleon himself. That's really cool. I've been told. This is a different sort of cheating. This is the kind of cheating that gets Pawn Stars ratings so that the show can stay on, and the guys can keep making their massive sums of money from both the show and the items brought into their store. You might notice that there are always a ton of customers in the store during an episode, but did you notice that none of them are ever really focused on and that none of them ever go up to the stars of the show? Do you know why? It's because they're put there to make the place look busy while they shoot an episode. The guys aren't allowed to actually work the counter during regular work hours because of some privacy policies. So they bring in people to be the customer crowd and then bring in the big clients who are selling the items they wish to showcase in whatever episode they're shooting. Pretty sad and also pretty sketchy. This Shabbat is actually real. Really? Hey, Mark, what's up? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I have a book signed by... Number four, the Hotchkiss Cannon. My passion has always been towards field artillery. In my opinion, being a cannon collector, the bigger the better. I bought this at an auction back east about 10 years ago. All right, before I really dig into this one, I do have to admit that the guy who brought this cannon in definitely did screw himself out of the money just as much as the Pawn Stars did. When this cannon from 1890 showed up at the pawn shop, an expert was immediately brought in to make sure it was legit and to estimate the current value of the historical piece. Well, the expert came back with a price of 40,000. The guy who brought the cannon in was over the moon and said that he had only expected to snag 30,000. Well, that's all it took for one of the guys to shake his hand, pass him $30,000 and say thanks for coming out. He did set himself up by giving away his lower expectations, but it's still a crappy move just to turn around when it seems a deal is on the table and say, okay, we'll give you $10,000 less than what we were going to. Yeah! Number three, their experts purposely lowball the customers. I'm just assuming it's a Peter Max. <laughs> that it is. Pretty interesting. Peter Max has got a, a really weird storied life. You know what I mean? This guy was born in like Nazi Germany. This really pisses me off about the show. First off, I definitely question whether or not the show's experts are actually experts in their given fields. I mean, it's a reality TV show, so there's already a lot of fakery. And here's the thing. Even if they are truly experts, they will never give the seller coming into the store a better deal than the pawnbrokers. Why not? Because they work on the show for the pawnbrokers. If I was a customer in there and I was looking to sell something, I would definitely not use their experts to appraise the item I'm selling. I'd definitely bring my own. Don't you think it's just a little bit of a conflict of interest when suddenly an expert appears from backstage and says, oh yeah, that would go for about 1,000 when it's actually worth 40? But it's certainly understandable because they're trying to help the pawn stars because that's how they make their money. Let me have someone look at it. I mean, the problem with Peter Max is there's, there's, he has so much stuff out there, okay? I'm not taking away. I mean, he's real. I mean, mega iconic. People absolutely. Number two, Chris Craft Boat. Check out a boat with Rick and see if we can make a great buy. He's going to be happy to see yours truly, his best friend. How you doing, boss? What the f are you doing here? This boat was picked up by one of the Pawn Stars for a measly $16,500. That's not too bad. It needed some work, and the guy who brought it in just couldn't afford to get it done. He wanted no less than $20,000 for it, but ended up leaving $3,500 short of what he wanted as a minimum. Too bad for him. After putting a few grand into the boat, it ended up fetching about $30,000. I bet when the guy watched this episode, he must have felt sick to his stomach. He could have ended up making some good money off that thing. Instead, the Pawn Stars do what they do best. They seem to love nothing more than unfair deals as long as it'll get them money they want. And what's really sad is the pawn guy who bought the boat just bought it on a hunch without knowing how much he could actually go for it.
All right, guys, we're gonna have a great day out on the water. It's time to hit the open sea. We got an amazing captain and an even better first mate. Number one, they gang up on the customers to cheat them. It shouldn't surprise anyone that the Pawn Stars have certain tactics in order to get their customers to part with their items while getting as little money as possible. And one of those tactics is to gang up on them. I don't mean in a physical way, there's no violence involved as long as we know. But if one guy is insulted by an offer from one of the Pawn Stars and he starts to get annoyed, another Pawn Star will stroll up and start having words and before you know it, you've got four guys on one telling him that there's no way he'll ever find a better deal anywhere else. It just wouldn't be possible. When you're trying to sell an item and you have people who seem knowledgeable about these things telling you that you won't find a better offer, of course you'll agree to the sale. But they're actually just running a scam on you. Don't trust pawnbrokers. Just don't. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please let us know by leaving a like and subscribing. It helps us out a lot and it lets us know you want to see more content like this. So as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.